بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم احمده واصلي على رسول الكريم Today I want to talk about the literary miracle of the word Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa You see First of all let me show you the seven miraculous aspects of this word in a nutshell first number one prediction that the masjid will be a masjid which can only happen if the area is conquered or surrendered so the first thing that i want to emphasize the first of the seven miracles is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when allah said subhanahu wa ta'ala asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa that Masjid al-Aqsa was a prediction that there will be a masjid called Masjid al-Aqsa in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because Isra wal Mi'raj is connected to end times, and it is the surah before Surah Al-Kahf which is connected to end times, so the two surahs are interconnected along with Surah Al-Maryam. But I'm not going into that right now. Only pointing out that because this is the area of the end times, which is the area of Masjid al-Aqsa. This is the area of end times, okay? Jerusalem. And the other thing that I want to point out very uh, quickly here, and this can also be considered a miracle, but it's not one of the seven miracles that I was uh, referring to. The first miracle is that the prediction that Masjid al-Aqsa would be a masjid in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Therefore, an integral part of the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, as will be further cleared by the other ex explanations of this express expression called Masjid al-Aqsa. Why this word was used, okay? But the other thing that I want to share with you is that sometimes the Ahadith use one word, Quran uses another word to express the same thing. And this is to show the interrelationship between the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And it's also miraculous in a sense that the Quran uses one terminology, a hadith use another terminology. I'll just give you one example quickly before I give you this example. You see, and after I explain the seven miracles in short form, then after that we're going to go through about ten classical uh, writings on the issue of Masjid Aqsa as it refers to this particular verse of the Quran. Okay. Now, that is that in the ahadith of the Prophet وسلم, most of the time, most of the time, the emphasis is on the word Baytul Maqdas. Baytul Maqdas. Which is different from Masjid Aqsa. So you can see the Prophet used the word Masjid al-Aqsa specifically referring to the Masjid al-Aqsa. But generally referring to the area, the Prophet used the word Baytul Maqdas. Just like in the Ahadith, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever the Prophet talked about intentions, the Prophet used the word Niyya, intention. But when Quran talked about intentions, Quran used the word Ikhlas. The Ahadith don't use the word Ikhlas specifically when it comes to intention. But the Qur'an used the word Mukhlisin, Mukhlisin Allahuddin, for example. Anyway, this was a side point. So, how did the Qur'an predict in Mecca when the Prophet ﷺ has been cut off from everything? You see, Isra wal Miraj happens when? After Khatija passes away. After the uncle of the Prophet passes away. After uh, the Ta'if people have said, uh, no to him and he's been cut off from all asbab all asbab have been cut off and at that time he's being told look your ummah will even take Jerusalem and even have Masjid al-Aqsa so at that time Surah al-Isra or Surah al-Bani Israel is a Makki Surah as referring to the Isra is the land journey of the Prophet Sallallahu to this place, right, called Masjid Al-Aqsa. Okay, so that's the first miracle, is that this uh, was a prediction 
that this would be in the hands of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Therefore, calling it the Masjid. Okay, and uh, also when Allah subhanahu wa taala says Barakna mahawla, we have blessed whatever is around it. Meaning, how will something be blessed? It will be blessed through the blessed which is the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. But I think this point is clear. Okay, So the prediction that the masjid will be a masjid, and this can only ha happen if the area was conquered or surrendered. And as you know, when it comes to uh, the issue of the end times, okay, when it comes to the issue of the end times, then what? Uh, who was the one that conquered uh, Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem? Umar bin Khattab. And who is Umar bin Khattab? The door that stops the fitans from coming. Okay? He's, this is clear in the Ahadis. I don't have time to go into this. But Umar was the man who stops the doors of fitan from coming. Okay? And so when Umar passes away, the fitans start coming. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, count six between me and the hour. The first is Mauti, my death. Then Fatul, Baytul Maqdas, the Prophet, the conquering of Baytul Maqdas, okay, and so the conquering of Baytul Maqdas is the prediction the Prophet gave, which happened in the time of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. You all know the story. So that is the first uh, miraculous uh, point about this terminology called Masjid al-Aqsa. Okay, number two, proper borders given to the Prophet. Uh, given to Prophet Ibrahim from Mecca to Al-Aqsa. Okay, so now uh, this area from Masjid Al-Haram ila Masjid Al-Aqsa barakna mahawlahu we blessed everything around it. These are the two points of the actual border of the Holy Land. You see, the Jewish people have their idea of the greater Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates, right? And they have the idea of uh, of what uh, is the borders that is promised to them, which is all of Israel, meaning no Gaza, no West Bank, all of this, the land of the Canaanites, it's called in the Bible. The, there are two promises of land, okay? One is the land of the Canaanites, and one is the uh, land of uh, from the Euphrates to the Nile. This I've talked about in other places. This I've talked about in other places. So let's go on to, uh, uh, so proper borders is the border actually between the two masjids that were built first by, uh, the first uh, built by Prophet Adam alayhi And then these two borders, meaning from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, these were built by Prophet Ibrahim alayhi The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi went from Mecca to Sham, and Sham includes what is today uh, Palestine, and there he built this Masjid Al-Aqsa, okay, which then later on became the Qibla, okay, of the Bani Israel, and remained the Qibla when the Prophet Sallallahu was in Mecca. So the Prophet was praying towards the Kaaba, but actually in the direction, now this is a very important word, in the direction of Bayt Al-Maqdas, or in the direction of Jerusalem. Okay, so uh, just like uh, here now, let me go to number three. Aqsa means far. This is a simple meaning, but I'm going to go into more specific meanings later on. It was far from the Prophet. Okay, so there was no way uh, the Prophet would have known about it. He was an Ummi. He wouldn't know that there's a masjid there. Only the people of the book would know that there's a masjid in a certain direction. It was far from the Prophet. And so it was known as Masjid Aqsa. It's a masjid. Allah has declared it a masjid. Why has Allah declared it a masjid? Also, I'll clarify here today. Because, number one, of course, it was built by Prophet Ibrahim. But also, in the Mi'raj, the Adhan was given. All the Prophets prayed there. Now it's become a masjid. And how did you know it became a masjid? Well, look, masjid is not its walls. There are masjids in the desert. They have a rock in the front, a rock in the back, and the two sides. That's the alama. That's the sign. This is 
a masjid. You could pray within this area. It's dedicated to Allah. Masjid al-Aqsa, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh, was the first one to pray in Masjid al-Aqsa. And it also had an ilam. It had a sign that this is the masjid. And there was a rock that was put there. Okay. So the first miracle being the word Masjid al-Aqsa. That how would, uh, first of all, the Prophet even know that this is a masjid. Right. Number two, the prediction that this would remain a masjid in the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and in fact, uh, over here, I was for a long time of the opinion that uh, I was a long time in the opinion that that uh, maybe the Jews will drop Masjid Aqsa. It's still possible, but it won't. It will not be done by the Jal, or that they will resurrect something by Masjid Aqsa or near Masjid Aqsa, or say Muslims can share something with Masjid Aqsa, something like this, but they will try to build their temple. But over here I want to mention, there's a narration that is very interesting in this regard, okay? Uh, the Prophet said, قَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم فينا, The Prophet stood up amongst us, أَنْزَرْتُكُمْ الْمَصِيحِ I warn you of Masih. هُوَ مَمْسُوحُ الْعَيْنِ He has... You know, he has he's blind from one eye. And then the Prophet Yusiru Mahul Jibal, the mountains will run with him, Wal Khubs and the bread, Wal Anhar and the and the rivers. Anharul Ma and the water of the rivers will run with him. Okay. Alama tuhu the sign of his him is Yam Kuthu fil Ardi Arbaina Sabahan. He will be on the on the earth for forty days. يَبْلُغُ سُلْطَانُهُ كُلُّ مَنْحَلْ His kingship will have every type of service. Okay? لَا يَعْتِي عَرْبَعَةَ مَسَاجِدْ He will not be able to come to four masjids. So he will have either Ya'juj and Ma'juj build the temple. Okay? They, because they are his leg workers. Okay? Uh, number one, Ka'ba, Masjid al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa Masjid al-Aqsa, the third one, the one the Jal will not be able to come is Masjid al-Aqsa. Wa Tur, Wa Turi Sinin, is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke directly to Musa alayhi salatu wa These four places according to this riwayah, and this is a very sahih hadith, okay? Akhrajahu Ahmad fi Musnad, wa huwa sahih, okay? And At-Tur huwa ismu al-Jabal alladhi kallam Allah ta'ala alayhi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Okay. Uh, so, uh, there are four places where the Dajjal will not be able to enter. So, this masjid may remain a masjid. It will remain a masjid for the Muslims till the end times. Okay. Uh, even though uh, clearly uh, the Dajjal will have control of Yerushalayim. Bayt al-Maqdas, uh, he will have control of you, but he may not be able to, in the resistance of the Muslimin in the area of, uh, of Bayt al-Maqdas and around Masjid al-Aqsa, will stand firm till the end of the times. And again, this is like another prediction of the Prophet wasallam. okay? So number one, prediction that the Masjid will be a Masjid, okay? And that it was given to Umar bin Khattab, that there are the proper borders, Okay, that there is a border, border, even the idea that there's a border of barakna mahawlahu yani kulluhu min al masjid al haram il al masjid al aqsa. Okay, ye ba'id min rasulai sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huwa masjid ba'id min sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll talk more about this in a second. It was in the direction of the qibla and in fadila at that time. Meaning, the direct, the actual qibla in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was masjid al aqsa. And in that sense, Masjid Aqsa in the Makki period of the Prophet وسلم, and for a small part of the Madni period, Masjid Aqsa had the fadila over the Kaaba. Okay, both built by Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, But it had a fadila. Okay, so keep this in mind that the Prophet was praying from the very beginning in the direction of the Ahlul Kitab and he's an unlettered person. He's an unlettered person. So that's a miracle. To even be able to say, well, that is the direction, to be able to give the direction of something, okay, and to know that something exists, okay, so that in itself, 
uh, is so the concept of a border the, how did the prophet know he was ummi the concept of a certain direction how did the prophet know he was an ummi how did the prophet know that there was a masjid built by prophet ibrahim or anyone that he was an ummi right how did the prophet know that this masjid will remain part of the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam till the end of times that's you know this is miraculous uh, you can say okay uh, so even one of the differences and i'll talk more about this in a second but uh, the difference between bayt al-maqdas and bayt al-aqsa versus masjid al-haram in makkah okay so even though uh, we can d- the whole uh, you know we pray towards the kaaba and the prophet was praying towards uh, the uh, the masjid al-aqsa okay that was the qibla qibula but in general you have makkah in fact, the Prophet ﷺ in the in the Mi'raj, he was in the Darul Bayt al-Ummi Hani. He was in the house of the sister of Ali radiAllahu anh. From there, uh, meaning in Mecca, he was in Mecca, and that whole area is Masjid al-Haram. Within Masjid al-Haram, there's the Kaaba. So this concept is being given that there is the city, and then the center of the city. The center of the city is where the spiritual center is, like the Kaaba versus the city. This is being clarified. So there is Masjid al-Aqsa and then the city. This is different from the Temple of Suleiman. This is not the Temple of Suleiman. That I will talk about in maybe a few days or later on. I'll talk more about that. Okay. But this is what specifically I'm making the point that there is the city where people live and then the spiritual center of the city, Masjid al-Aqsa versus uh, Bayt al-Maqdas. Okay. And the, uh, the Kaaba versus uh, Mecca versus Masjid al-Haram. So, barakna ma hawla. This whole area is barakna. We have blessed all of this area. Okay? And so, you have Hijaz. Okay? And you have, what? Sha. Hijaz. Hijaz and Sham. These are the two blessed areas. Then you have Najd, which is the unblessed area. Okay? I don't want to go into that. When I do my 40 hadiths on Bayt al-Maqdas, I'll make more some of these issues more clear at that time. Okay. Then, ah, so the other aspect of uh, Masjid al-Aqsa is, you see, uh, Aqsa, as it is used in the Quran particularly, جَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلُ يَسْعَى Just I'm giving you an example. Okay. When something is marked uh, at the farthest point of something, meaning it's this again has to do with putting border lines, okay? Ja'a min aqsal madinati, rajulun yasa. Or something that's in a remote place that's hard to go to, but you have the goal to get there, okay? So al aqsa will always be in the ummah or has been in the ummah of Prophet Muhammad. The place of conflict, the place of where if you get this, then the fitans they go away. Okay, this is why Aqsa is so important. This is why it's connected with Sudul Kahf. Okay, and uh, just for the people that haven't heard this before, you know, over there, Subhanallah the Asra bi Abdi, Subhanallah for the one who took his servant up. Over there, Sudul Kahf is Alhamdulillah Ladi Anzala ala Abdi, Alhamdulillah who sent down on his servant. Okay, so and the both surahs have the same number of ayahs. Both surahs end with. Uh, the quls, the, uh, the, uh, the two quls on both surahs. Both surahs have many similar verses. I'm not going to go into that. So they're like twin surahs, okay? And this concept I've clarified in other places. Like Mu'ab you have you have Zahrawain, Surah Al-Baqarah, and Al-Imran. Like this, most of the surahs in Quran, they're in pairs. Surah Al-Fil, Surah Al-Quraysh, for example. Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Kafirun, for example. Surah Al-Rahman, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, for example. Like so many examples. Okay, so the Muzammil, so the for example. So anyway, the point being here that uh, that uh, you have uh, Masjid Aqsa is the farthest point, and it also means to it has the sense of a a reaching a difficult goal. Okay, and the Tafasir make this clear, and I will be going over that. But just keep this in mind, uh, so that when we come to that point in Tafsir. It will, uh, some of the classical writings will become clear. Okay? So there's a goal, there's an effort. Ja'a min aqsal madina ti rajulun yasa'a. Right? Fahamalatu makanan qasiyya. 
so she carried I mean, Maryam carried uh, uh, her, you know her, her baby Isa alayhi salatu salam to a remote place to a far place a difficult place okay with a certain goal in mind she had a certain goal in mind okay so uh, so the is as it is used in Quran it is quite miraculous and I'll go more into this when I go into the text the other is the particular words used in Quran that mean far there are many words in Quran, basically five of them, that mean uh, that are connected to this. The first is uh, amiq versus aqsa. Aqsa is something that is far, but what has a direction, has a clear direction. Amiq is something far, but it it has no direction. Okay, it has no direction. Okay, and then you have ba'id and qarib. Okay, why didn't it say Masjid al-Ba'id? Because Ba'id means generally far and Qarib means generally n near. Okay, and uh, uh, so, but the Quran wanted something more specific, something that's difficult to, that's going to have difficulty to get to. It's a, and it's a goal. It's the goal to get to. Okay, so the first goal of the Prophet Sallallahu in his own lifetime was Makkah and Medina. And then the goal of the Ummah is Jerusalem. Okay, and the goal of the Ummah is to maintain Jerusalem. Okay, and so Amiq is far, but there's no direction. Aqsa is far, but has a direction. Okay, Ba'id versus Qarib. Shahiq, uh, sh uh, Shahiq also means directionless, and the Quran uses this uh, in the in the sense of uh, Quran uses this in the sense of what, like a bird uh, that. You know, when something is dropped and a bird picks it up and then takes it to some remote place and then drops it again, it's just directionless. Okay, so also, even though shahik means directionless, and amik also means directionless, but amik is a distance that's so far it's basically impossible to get to. Aqsa means far, and it's your goal to get to it, but it is possible to get to it, but you need to put some effort into it. Okay, so now when we look at, for example, the Quran. So I'm sorry if this is going to be a little bit technical for my brothers and sisters, but you can listen to it and you'll still benefit, inshallah. But those of you who are intermediate level and have been studying Quran, this will make more sense. The opposite of Qaswa or Aqsa is Adna. When it came to the Masjid, now notice this, look over here. If antum fil udwati dunya, okay? When you were on the near side, okay, of the valley. Dunya Adna, near side of the valley. Wahum udwatil quswa, and they were on the far side of the valley. Okay, so the near, so the opposite of qaswa or aqsa is adna. Just keep this in mind. Okay, the opposite of aqsa is adna. Now notice this point. Okay, those of you that adna is used for Jerusalem, where it's the room with the word adna. Gulibat al room fi adna al in the land that is nearby. It also means the lowest point on earth. But in terms of Aqsa versus Adna, Aqsa meaning far, Adna meaning near. When it came to the land that is, again, connected, Barakna Mahawlahu, right? Adna al-Ard, that land that is near you, that is part of you. Okay, that is what? Part of you, near you. So again, even in that verse, there is this sense of of course, there's the scientific miracle of the uh, lowest point on earth, but this general area, okay, is adna. It is part of you, okay? It is dun It is part of you. It is near you. Yudnina alayhinna bi jalabi bihinna. When they put their jilbab over themselves, meaning they bring it near to themselves. So that is very part near of you, okay? Again, that border aspect. But when it came to adna al-ard, when it came to the land, it said adna. When it came to the masjid, masjid al-Aqsa, but it's the far masjid, but the near land. Far masjid, but the near land. Okay, Adan al-Ard versus masjid al-Aqsa. The place is the same. For one, you're using the word Aqsa, which means far. For one, you're using the word Adana, which means land. Meaning this land is connected, but in this connected land, that is the masjid, that is the far, farthest point of the, the border of the holy lands. Okay, barakna, what we have blessed, everything around it. Barakna, mahawlahu. Okay, I hope this is, shouldn't be too difficult to grasp for those of you that have some uh, 
relationship with the Quran. Okay. Now let us look at how the word Aqsa is used within the Quran. Ja'a rajulun min Aqsa al-Madinati yasa'a. So a man came from the farthest point of the city. Aqsa But here it's showing he was running in a certain direction, in a specific direction, with a specific goal to reach Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam from a far place with some effort. Okay. Ja'a rajulun min Aqsa al-Madinati yasa'a. Qala ya Musa. Okay. In another place, جَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ So you're running towards a certain place, you're going, you're traveling, you're running, you're going, you're, you have a certain goal, and over in the first ayah he says, يَا مُوسَى the man, and the second ayah he says, يَا قَوْمِ O my people. Okay, so أَقْصَى is, you could have said, جَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ بَعِيدِ الْمَدِينَةِ But no, أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ because he had a specific goal in mind, and he had to put certain effort into it. In this way, when you read the ayah, Subhana Lazi Asra bi Abdihi Laila min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa. Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa. That masjid that requires you to have a certain, that's the goal. How did the Sahaba know to, when they were, when the Prophet passed away, in which direction they have to conquer the lands? Why did they go to Syria first? Why did they go to Sham first? These areas that the Prophet had blessed. Because Quran made it clear. This is the this is part of this. You have to go in this. This is your goal. This is your ghaya. Okay. Subhana lazi asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa. Okay. This ayah I already did. Wa id antum bil udwati dunya, wa hum bil udwati al qusa. Fa hamalat hu, fa nabazat bihi makanan qasiya. And this is when Maryam alayhi salam she went to the far place that was difficult to, but she had a certain goal in mind. She had to put a certain effort into reaching that desert, remote place to be able to protect herself while she was pregnant. Okay. Now let's look at some of the tafasir. So very quickly. Uh, so uh, over here, I'm going to point out where it says ذَلِكَ uh, uh, Okay, so أَيْ okay. So Aqsa means uh, far away. And ذلك بالاعتبار يعني إلى المسجد الأقصى ذلك اعتبار المكان المخاطبين. This is in regards to the people that were being addressed. Okay. به من نبي صل وأصحابه صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله عنهم أجمعين. This is in regards to they were being they were they were being addressed as the far masjid because for the prophet it was a far masjid and for the sahaba it was a far masjid and the prophet going forty days worth of journey in one night that is of course uh, part of the uh, miracle. Okay, so uh, the other thing I want to ba'id uh, anil isti'mal is difficult to use it. Okay, uh, difficult to put it into use. Okay, so Masjid Aqsa is a place that whose the spiritual aspects and stopping of the fitan and putting a door to the fit it is it is something that has difficulty aqsa is a place of difficulty okay and ba'id ba'id min al isti'mal uh okay now let's go to the next uh, tafsir uh balaghatul ghaya to reach your goal okay so this is part of masjid aqsa the meaning of the word aqsa balaghatul ghaya okay uh uh, and then it says, "Sara fi aqsaha wa huwa ghayatuha." Okay, so reaching a goal, as I've already explained before. And then in the uh, tafsir of Tahwir wa Tanwir, Ibn Ashur, who is very famous, he says, "Walam yubayyin hunalika masjid." It was not clear that there's a masjid there. Okay, if you went to the when you conquered, it wasn't clear that there was a masjid there. Okay, "Walam yubayyin hunalika masjidin ila an kana fi." Uh, until what? The time Zamn Abdul Malik bin Marwan Marra bil Badaya bina'a qubba ala sahra. So there was a stone there in the time of Malik bin Marwan from which they actually started to build the masjid. But the masjid was declared a masjid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was told to us by the Prophet that it was already a masjid from the time of Prophet Ibrahim and maybe even before that. Okay? Uh, Ammaratul Masjid al-Aqsa. Okay, 
uh, so this is part of the uh, history. And then uh, how did they know that, the, that because there was a rock that was put there? In fact, uh, I'll mention this because I've been there. The Dome of the Rock, the one that is very famous with the Gold Dome, there is a rock there in which you can clearly see, like, it's almost like Jibreel put in like a very smooth hole for the tying of the Burak, okay? And the person showed me um, the area where that, uh, everybody that lives there knows this because they go back to that masjid. But there's an area where there's a hole and, uh, you know, that's where the rope was put to tie the Burak. And then when you go further out, that's where Masjid Al-Aqsa is. And initially, there was a stone there to mark that place where the Prophet led the prayer, okay, of all the Prophets, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Alayhi Him, Salatu Wasallam. And so, uh, and then that's where the Masjid was built. But it was declared a Masjid in the Quran, in, in both in terms of a prophecy as well as uh, uh, uh so over here, you, if you see uh, in uh, Ibn Aqiyah, he writes, "Well, Masjid al-Aqsa, Masjid al-Baytul Maqdas. It is, it is what? It is Baytul Masjid al-Baytul Maqdas. It is the Masjid of Baytul Maqdas. Just like the Kaaba or and Mas or Masjid al-Haram versus uh, Makkah. Okay, Samahu Aqsa. I. It was named Aqsa. Why? Fi dhalik al In that time, كان أقصى بيوت الله. It was the farthest." House of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 from the Kaaba. Okay. Uh, okay. The next uh, tafsir uh, over here. Uh, this is the same one. Uh, over here it says. So over here it says. The uh, the uh, the asra of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم من دار الأميحاني إلى هذه الإرادة بالمسجد الحرام المكة. Okay, مسجد الحرام meaning مكة ومكة والحرم كله مسجد. مكة and the whole of the Haram is مسجد. واختيار الفراء. Well, and these are different scholars. فراء is one of them. زجاج أي إلى المسجد الأقصى قالوا كلهم يعني بيت المقدس meaning بيت المقدس the whole of Jerusalem. Okay. وَقِيلَ لَهُ أَقْصَى لِلْبُعْدِ الْمُسَافَةَ So it's a far distance of travel. بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Okay, so the two, you know, you have the mosque of the Prophet in Mecca, they're close by, and this is the far, farthest point of the border of the holy and blessed lands. Okay, الَّذِي بَارَكْنَا مَا حَوْلَهُ Okay, then, also in this tafsir, إلى المسجد الأقصى أي بيت المقدس يسمى به إذ لم يكن حين إذن وراء المسجد. So there was no masjid at that time between Mecca between Mecca because there was no Medina yet. Okay, when these verses. So between Mecca and Aqsa, there was no other masjid. These were the two of the farthest points from each other. Okay, so there's Mecca to the farthest masjid, the farthest point of the blessed area. Okay. So I just wanted that to be clear. Then, uh, in this uh, tafsir, so I hope just this phrase, Masjid al-Aqsa, uh, now you have a greater maybe appreciation for this word, Masjid al-Aqsa. And inshallah, I'm going to do the 40 hadiths on the word Masjid al-Aqsa, or the, I mean, the Bayt al-Maqdas, inshallah. It's connected to this, just like Kaaba versus Mecca, or Masjid al-Haram. Um, and so, inshallah, jazakumullah khair, inshallah, pray for me. Make sure you subscribe and also look at the comment section. And jazakumullah khair, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.